Yes, okay, you have got a definitive treatment done. She was in her second trimester. And uh, but she also gives a history of recurrent stone formation. Okay, like she already had stones before, before also. So after the pregnancy and all, you decided to go for a metabolic workup. And we already know metabolic workup. And can you tell me, uh, just quickly, COP is going to be acidic. So what are the things you are going to see in the acidic container of 24-hour urine sample? You are going to look for the citrate, you are going to look for the calcium and cysteine okay and oxalates and phosphates so these are the things you're going to look for in the acidic content of the uh 24 hour sample apart from that in the other sample that is the standard sample ph and electrolytes and the total urine volume and the uric acid so you got a metabolic workup done for this lady and you found that she's having hypercalciuria okay how do you define hypercalciuria so i will come to, okay Okay, I'll first discuss on hypercalciuria, then we will take this. Okay, so hypercalciuria is defined when you find more than 7 millimole of calcium in the urine, okay, per day. Or this is for males, more than 6 millimoles per day of calcium as in females. So this is defined as hypercalciuria when you get in the 24 Now, to define now there are three types of hypercalciuria this can be absorptive this can be renal leak or this can be resorptive now absorptive means there is more absorption from the git we already discussed the situation like a vitamin d is more in pregnancy so in pregnancy absorptive hypercalcium is more common because uh, more absorption of calcium in the git Renal leak, the kidney is not able to hold the calcium. Those are the more excretion of calcium from the glomerulus and the, 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 there is loss of calcium in the urine now. And resorption, resorption happens when there is more parathyroid hormone. This parathyroid is causing uh, release of calcium from the bones by, uh, so parathyroid is known to cause this uh, calcium and this calcium is coming out in the urine. Now, how do you differentiate? Yeah, please mute uh, yourself, Dr. Uh, thank you. So, how do you differentiate them? So, I'll just give you a very small formula. And we are not going to details, but for your MCQs, how do we differentiate? So when you get a scenario like this and you are asked to differentiate which type of hypercalcemia the patient is having, so the first thing is you have to look for the serum calcium of the patient. Now, if you look at the serum calcium of the patient, I'll just clear it and write it. Okay. Now, if you look at the serum calcium of the patient, so we have to differentiate between absorptive, you have to differentiate between absorptive, renal leak, and resorptive. Okay, so if you look at the serum calcium, the serum calcium will be normal in these two. So when you get a serum, normal serum calcium, start thinking about absorptive or renal leak because, because of the compensation, either they'll be low or they'll be normal okay either they are be low because they are losing out or they will be normal because of the compensation but in resorptive because of the high resorption of the bones the calcium in the blood is always going to be high the serum calcium is always going to be high and this is the high serum calcium a part of it is coming out in urine okay remember whenever you find a high serum calcium it has to be a resorptive resorptive hypercalciuria. It has to be start thinking in lines of hyperparathyroidism. When you find, now you find a normal serum calcium or a low serum calcium, you are confused between a absorptive and a renal leak. The next thing is you get a parathyroid hormone done. When you do an intact parathyroid hormone, if you do a renal, inner renal leak, what do you expect? The kidneys are losing out so you are, the kidneys are not able to hold the calcium. So there will be secondary hyperparathyroidism in this patients. Okay. Since the kidneys are losing out, the kidneys are going to send sample, send signals for secondary 
release of hyperparathyroidism. So the parathyroid hormone will be raised in these patients. But here, there won't be any rise in the parathyroid hormone. It will be normal because there is no feedback. So there is more absorption and that is going out. There is no leak from the kidney. But in the renal leak, the kidneys are not able to hold the calcium. So the parathyroid hormone is going to act on the... Uh, so the secondary, there will be secondary hyper, the kidneys are going to get stimulus and there will be secondary hyperparathyroidism in a renal leak. So you will find an elevated hyperparathyroid hormone in this. What will happen to the parathyroid hormone level in this uh, resorptive? It will always be high, okay, because it's a case of primary hyperparathyroidism. So in resorptive, there is primary hyperparathyroidism. In renal leak, there is secondary hyperparathyroidism. In absorptive, the parathyroid hormone will be normal. Calcium will be low or normal. So you have to, you can easily differentiate. First thing is look at the serum calcium. If it is raised, mark as resorptive. If it is normal, start thinking rule out a resorptive. If it is normal, now then next thing is you look at the parathyroid. If the parathyroid is raised, mark it as renal leak. If the parathyroid is normal, mark it as absorptive. Very simple. Keep it very simple. Okay. Don't uh, uh, keep it very. Don't make it difficult. Keep it very simple. Okay, so why does the renal leak happen? Because of Barter syndrome, there can be very syndromic cause or they can be uh, difficult at the level of renal handling. Now, what can you do if the patient is losing out calcium? You can give the patient some thiazides, okay? They are, this thiazide diuretics can uh, help in calcium absorption. So the patient's uh, leakage of calcium will decrease and uh, you can ask the patient to reduce the salt intake. Okay, so, so if there is less salt, again, less uh, calcium is going to go with it. And so this, uh, there'll be uh, less loss of calcium. So these are the two things that you advise. And if you look at this MCQ, I think it will become further clear.